Welcome to Calculus. We are going to attempt that number 78 from section 2.5. So this is Calculus 2.5, number 78. Uh, I just worked through this one. It is a pretty long problem. Uh, so this is going to take me a number of screens, I'm sure. Uh, but I thought it was kind of a fun problem to make you think a little bit about what's going on. and as So let's work it through here. So you have an ellipse at this point. You want to find out when, or what are the equations of the two tangent lines that go through 4, 0. Let's make a rough, rough sketch of this. Hits there at 2, hits there at negative 2, hits here at 3, hits here, of course, at negative 3. Um, and they say they want to find the equation of the tangent that goes through 4, 0. So it's going to have to hit around, oops, missed it, didn't I? Something like that and something like this. So it appears it's going to hit somewhere around here and here. My first guess was maybe x equals 0.5 on, um, on the ellipse. Um, so, you know, we're so used to doing derivatives that we might just want to take the derivative. That's what we did in class the first attempt at this. But I think if we think about the problem before we get started, the first thing I would think about is this. What do you need to write the equation of a line? You need a point, check, and slope. All we need is to find the slope of this or this line. There, one's going to be plus and one's going to be minus of the other. Um, well, yeah, derivative is slope. But kind of the most basic level, even in a pre-calc sense, we could calculate the slope as... Let's do the, the positive one, the slope of the, or actually, the negative one. Let's do the slope of the one, um, slope of this one up here. I guess I'll call it slope negative because this one here is going down. But that way we can just use, oh, so we don't know what point this is, so we're going to have to call it xy. And the reason that's actually a pretty good idea is because that xy is on this ellipse um, equation that you see right here. This equation here has an x, y in it. Every There's an infinite number of points on it. And um, so if I use this x, y over here, um, they match up. So I can use some kind of substitution later to connect them. So let's give that a try. OK, so the slope from x, y to 4, 0 would be y minus 0 over x minus 4, which is y minus over 4. Whoops. That is not right, is it? Which is y over x minus 4. So that is going to be key. I'm going to probably have to carry that to the next screen here in a minute. The next thing you might want to do um, what is that equal to? That's the slope. Well, I don't know what the numbers are. But there's another way to represent the slope, and it's with derivative. So let's take the derivative of this. And sorry, this is so sloppy. This is really hard for me to get my handwriting decent. The derivative of that would be 1 fourth is the constant times 2 times x to the first times the derivative of x, which is 1, plus one ninth is the constant in front of that times two y to the first. We don't use the right first times the derivative of y. We have to do that because with respect to um, x. So if we solve for this, I'll throw the x stuff to the other side. So we'll have will that be negative one half x over there? And let me double check what I'm doing here. Okay, on the left side, you're going to have 2 ninths y, y prime. That's a 9. 9. So I'm going to get y prime by itself. I'm going to throw the other stuff over. I'll have negative 1 half x times 9 halves times 1 over y. How can we condense that a little bit? We could write it as negative 9x over 4y. And that, too will be kind of a critical equation we have to work with. In fact, 
those must be the same. Right? These have to be equal because this is the slope of that line. And this is the slope anywhere on the ellipse in terms of x and y. So let's set those equal, and that will give us a relationship that we're certain of between that relates x and y of that slope. Um, and what you find when you're doing problems like this, a lot of times you're just trying to come up with as many equations as possible. Okay, so let's start right off with setting those equal to each other. I think one was y equals x minus 4, and one was um, negative 9x over 4y. I'm trying out a new stylus, and I think I might like it less than the one I had before. Uh, how do you solve this? Cross multiply, and you have negative, no negative, you have 4y squared. Uh, let's delete all that. You have 4y squared equals negative 9x squared plus 36x. Um, so what variable do you want to solve for and plug in to the original? Because what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this equation. You know, I'm going to write like this. It's a little bit easier to work with in this form. Now I was looking at, uh, there is an idea I could multiply everybody by 36 here, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so I don't think you have to do that. You may not think to do that. But what I want to do is take information from this equation and plug in here. So usually I solve for x or I solve for y and plug in. But at this point you see that, do I really need to solve for x or y? What if I just solve for y squared? That'd be easy to solve for, and I could plug directly in. So that's what we're going to do. So if I solve just for y squared over here, we're just going to divide it by 4. We'll have negative 9 fourths x squared plus 9x. And that is what we're going to plug in here. So this will now be, um, so we've finally gotten somewhere where we're going to have an equation with only x's. And we can actually solve for x equals 1. Okay, so 1 fourth x squared. Ooh, this will cancel the minus 1 fourth x squared. Pretty good news. Plus x equals 1. Those cancel. You just have x equals 1. So, back to that sketch. I'm not going to draw it again, but you can look at your sketch. I was predicting x would be about a half. 1 turns out to be the answer, and that's good. I mean, if it was less than 1, I'd be concerned. If it was, you know, too close to 2, I'd be concerned. Certainly, if it was 2 or greater, it'd be impossible. But 1 seems very reasonable. So what were we doing again? We were trying to find the equation of the tangent lines passing through 4, 0, and we find out that those lines are going to... I'll make the sketch again. Those lines something like this, where that's at 4, are going to intersect here, if I could actually draw well, at x equals 1. So this is 1 something, and this is 1 something. Okay, well that's pretty good news. Um, so let's go back to the question. To write the equation of a line, you have to know a point, and we've known that from the beginning, 4, 0, and the slope. Well, we don't seem we're that much closer, but we are. Um, to find the slope of that line, if we find the y-coordinate, those question marks, this y and this y, then um, we can then calculate the slope, the exact slope there. So let's try finding those exact y-coordinates. So we're saying, okay, we have this um, 1 fourth x squared plus 1 ninth y squared equals 1 equation. What if, um, let me see if this is what I did. What if y is 1? You know what, we don't, we don't need to do this. Sorry. We could. We could find out that exact point and we'd be really proud of ourselves. But we don't have to. 
We do have to. Okay, this is where I wish I could go back. I know there's a way to do that on here, but I don't remember. And you can just make fun of me, and uh, we'll move on. So, sorry about that. Uh, we need it because, I was going to say, why don't we just plug in the derivative formula and find the exact slope? Well, we use implicit differentiation, so our derivative in, is in terms of x and y. Um, in fact, it is right here. Remember, this was our derivative. We need the y-coordinate, so sorry for dragging you through that confusion. So we're saying if x is 1, what is y? Well, this becomes 1 ninth y squared equals 3 fourths, or y squared equals 27 fourths, or y equals plus or minus 3 squared of 3 over 2. You might have to check my work on that one. That's it. That number, what is 3 squared of 3? That's about 5.1 over 2. It's about 2.5. Which again, looking at that sketch, seems reasonable because that's 3. I think it's about 2.5, 2.6. So, sounds okay. Um, you do not need to plug in the, the x. Oh, we already did that. Okay. So, those that's the y coordinate. Probably going to have to save that for the next page. Okay. What we now know is that our tangent lines go through the point 1 and 3 square root of 3 over 2 um, and 4, 0. And it's really plus or minus there. There's two tangent lines. Now we just got to write the equation. How do you do it? Well, we have to find um, the slope of the line. You know, I didn't even think about using the slope formula. Uh, you could, but I think it's going to be simpler to take this new point and plugging it in our derivative formula, which we found previously to be negative 9x over 4y. Uh, so it would be negative 9 times our x term over 4 times our y. I'm going to use the positive one. Um, if we put the negative one in, it's just going to be the same thing but with a negative. So this becomes negative 9 over 6 squared of 3. Rationalize top and bottom and you get negative 9 squared of 3 over 18 and finally that becomes negative squared of 3 over 2. And yes, if we did the other one, it would be negative. Uh, if we put a negative in, it actually be positive. So we end up with plus or minus squared of 3 over 2 is our slope. So finally, write the equations of the lines. We need the point-slope formula, y minus, I'm going to use this point. I'd much rather use that because the line has this slope and goes through both points. But the 4, 0 is much friendlier. So y minus 0 equals, we'll do the positive one first, square root of 3 over 2, x minus 4, or y equals the square root of 3 over 2, x minus... 2 square root of 3. Is that right? I didn't actually work it this far. Let's see if that's right. Yes, that's one of them. And the other one, as I said, if we'd put a negative in there, it would just make it negative square root of 3 over 2x. And then be plus 2 square root of 3. And so those are our two solutions. We are done. It took us 14 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, you won't see this on the test, but maybe it made you think a little bit about a bit about um, what slope means, how to write the equation of a line, what what is x y, how can we substitute all of the challenges that we encountered. I know it's good for me to practice again. So um, join us again next time. Goodbye. Made with DoodleCast Pro.